I am Zoe Marlowe, and when I'm not teaching at the university uh, the finer points of linguistics to my English speaking Turkish students who will be teachers, I'm cooking. And today I am going to show you how I cook a staple of the Turkish uh, kitchen, and it's called kasır. And it's like a hmm, bulgur uh, salad, and it's cold, but it's absolutely delicious. It's pretty much 100% vegan. And here are some of the ingredients. I wonder if I can change this. Hmm. Hang on a minute. I'll flip the camera screen. Okay, I'm back. Here are the ingredients which I will be using today. And I will describe each one as I throw it into the big bowl of bulgur, which is not in there yet. And this is going to be so interesting and fun. And when you're making this, make sure you have a nice big glass bowl like this. Uh, some of my favorite utensils are these. And of course, anything you want can go in here, but there are particular things we must use if we're going to do it sort of Turkish style. And of course, while I'm here, I've got cats underfoot. Other than that, I will get the bulgur going, which is right there, by the way. It's about a cup and a half of dry bulgur. It's called ince bulgur. It means it's very, very thin, tiny, tiny, tiny. It's really good. Okay, I'll be back in a minute when the water situation has started. I'm doing this at 11.30 at night. That is one cup and a half of this incredible stuff. It's, um, they said kasırlık. It's also keftelik. They use it for making uh, meatballs as well. Because it's kind of a, a, you know, it's wheat, basically. It's bulgur. And this brand, Duru, I like it very much. And I'm going to add something to the dry bulgur in this bowl before I uh, put the water in. And this is nane, which is, hold on, which is mint. It's just dry mint leaves. I'm just putting a bit in there. Some people probably put it in after, but I like to do it before I put the water in. Don't ask me why, it's just a preference. I'm just stirring it around a little bit. This mint is particularly good. You can buy, of course, dry mint. It's called kurunane. You can buy it, but um, I was given this as a special mint. It comes from uh, Hatay. It's in the most uh, southeastern part of Turkey. They have wonderful food products there, and they have amazing cooking too. That's as much nane as I'm putting in, or mint. And the reason I put it in is because after you cook the bulgur by leaving it in standing water for a while until the uh, water is soaked up by the bulgur, you would have to add this dry nane later, and it, it's harder to do. So it's much easier if you put this one dry ingredient in there first. I could also put the um, the cumin. I have cumin. I could put a little bit. They call this kimyon here. I could just put a tiny bit. I don't love this stuff. Uh, it's good. It's kind of like curry-ish. I don't really love it, but just put a pinch or two in it. A pinch or two of kimyon or cumin. And stir that up a bit. <laughs> the first time I made uh, kasır, I put way, way too much cumin in there, and it was horrible. So don't make that mistake. Be sparing on some of these ingredients. I think the water has boiled, so hang on a minute. So the next back. thing we're going to do is we're going to cook the bulgur, basically. You don't really cook it. You, people say measure the same amount of water as you have the cup and a half of dry bulgur, but I don't do it that way. I just cover, I just cover the bulgur with water that I've boiled, and when there's enough, I just think there's enough, <laughs> and there you go. That's my logic. 
so I'm not going to stir it up or anything like that. I'm just seeing if it's a little bit above it. Yes, it is covering it. So sometimes I add a little bit more just for good measure. It makes it a little bit softer. So there we go. Some people also put the red pepper paste in there first, but I don't. Now I'm going to cover this. And you can wait 15 or 20 minutes before you start doing anything to it. All of that water has to be soaked up by the booger. So it's in there, the water's in there, and I'm gonna start timing it. I'll be back after it's all soaked in. Kitchen helper, teddy bear, here he is. He's going to help me make this lovely dish caser today, aren't you, Teddy? Can you give mommy a meow? Meow? <laughs> so here we are, I'm back, and it's been about 15 or 20 minutes. Take that lid off of there and let's see if it's all soaked in nicely. Yes, it is, and it's about the perfect consistency. It's not too dry and it's not wet. It's just kind of in between, and this takes practice to kind of get that exactly perfect texture. This is about my 10th batch <laughs> of kasser. Everybody in my office at work knows how much I love making this and they all laugh at me. But you know, I love this dish. Um, it's a wonderful salad. It's vegan. It's easy. Uh, it's cheap to make. And you can just have it with everything. I mean, you can have it as a starter. It can be a snack. Um, I use it when I have people over, when we're not in the middle of COVID-19. Um, if I have guests over and we're drinking wine, well, we just use uh, kasir and cheese and other fun things to eat just while we're talking and sitting around drinking our wine. So, yeah. I'll be back in a minute. I will add, start adding the goodies to it. Doesn't it look great so far? And I've hardly done anything. Oh, wait till later, you're gonna love it. I mentioned that Kasser goes great with wine. Okay, so now we are starting the big process. This is quite an in-depth process. It's quite a lot of busy work. Um, most people start by putting the, this is, really lovely. It's red pepper. Uh, salsa is like a thick paste and it's made from red peppers, red bell peppers. But what I do, I do something differently. I start out by putting the Kermesa Biber powder in there. Um, this is paprika for those who don't know the Turkish terminology. And I'm just going to throw a little bit of this in there. This uh, salad comes out this beautiful orange color. It's such a colorful, beautiful thing. You will just not believe it when you see it later. Okay, so I've thrown in a little bit of this Kermesa Biber or paprika, kind of like paprika. It doesn't taste like the um, American. What's wrong with you guys? The cats are really going crazy. I'm like, I'm not cooking for you guys, okay? <laughs> Anyway, it doesn't look like much because I'm going to add the red pepper paste now. Let's see if I can just dump it in there. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do. I don't really need all of this. But anyway, I will start uh, trying to get this all sorted out. It looks like it's going to be very hard to get this to mix up well. So. I'm going to turn off my video for a minute and I'll be back when this looks really orangey. Okay, so this is when it's going to start looking beautiful. I have added a little bit more paprika or kermes de biber. I put all of the, uh, the paste that's made of red peppers in here too. There's still a little bit of dis, uh, the whiter color like the bulgur, but that will change because I've got other orange and red things going in here. So the next thing I'm going to put in is a little bit of this stuff called Kermese Pulbiber. It's crushed red pepper. Pulbiber is actually a little bit hot. Uh, it isn't probably to most Turks, but to me it is. <laughs> 
so I just put a few flakes in there. I'm okay, maybe I have a tiny bit more than a few. Because I have another thing to make it hot. Oops, I'm not doing very good it. Holding my foam at the same time. There you go, look how beautiful that. Pull the Okay, I didn't go mad. I just kind of put a bit in there. I'm just gonna sort of sift that through a bit. And then another thing is, I don't want to forget to put salt and pepper in here. I know it sounds silly, but I've forgotten this a few times and it does need salt. I don't put tons, just a bit, because there's salt in some of the other things that I will add. And I don't put lots of black pepper in there, just a, just a tad, because it's nice. And we're getting ready for different ingredients coming up very quickly here, so... The next thing I'm going to put in is some tomato salsa that I made. It's like salsa. I made it on the stove. I cooked, um, I cooked fresh tomatoes, and I put onion in there too. And normally I put garlic in there, but today I didn't. I'm trying different things. So there's just oh, there's also some fresh. Uh, raw bell pepper in here, red pepper, but I cooked it uh, in the same mixture. So I'm going to put some of this in, not all of it, probably maybe half. So I'll be right back when I've so done that. to be the only person filming here. I didn't even put half of it, I just put some. Um, this adds a little bit of moisture, not too much, but it adds the cooked onion, the cooked tomato, and the cooked red pepper. Actually, I might have one more quick tablespoon of this. Winnie, stop sniffing around over there, please. I just love the red peppers when I cook them with the onion and the tomatoes. They just are delicious. And this dish is really full of vegetables, so that's the cool part about um, kasur. Kasur is like, for me, just a big heaping ton of vegetables inside of this, almost like pasta. Um, it's not as hard as pasta, it's much softer, but bulgur, when it's little like this, it just has a nice texture to it. And as you can see, it kind of forms, you know, you can see it does forms a little bit, but really it's delicious. And a lot of Turks eat it uh, on lettuce, they put it on kvergic, they call it, and it's like you just take a piece of lettuce and you just fill it up with this lovely orange concoction, and oh, it's just absolutely delicious. Some people don't like lettuce, like my friend Janet, but um, you can just eat it plain out of a bowl, you know. Uh, it's so addictive, actually. I'm not doing the best job of mixing this yet because we've got so much more to put in. Coming up, we have something to put a little bit of sweetness to it and a little bit of sourness to it and also um, some more dry ingredients. Well, the first one I can put in. This stuff here is called sumac and it's just beautiful. It's kind of a salty um, plant-based, you know, sumac plant and it's dark purple, and it's pretty. And this is why I don't put a lot of salt in, because this has a bit of saltiness to it, in my opinion, anyway. But I just think it adds to the color and texture, again. This is such a beautiful dish. Um, it has so many textures and colors in it, and I especially just love that it's bright orange, <laughs> you know? Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so. Let's add a few more things. Now we're getting to the point where it's really coming together. The flavors are coming together. Um, it's not perfect yet. There's a few exciting things to put in. The first thing is we're going to add lots of green stuff. And the first one is parsley. Um, in Turkey, parsley is called maidanos, and it isn't the same exact parsley as you get in America. Um, this is more like the flat leaf Italian parsley, which is just beautiful for this dish. Look at that. Oh, you know what would be great in here? Cilantro. If I could get cilantro 
Oh my gosh, it would be the best dish ever. I'm going to try and find some. I know they have it somewhere. I just haven't come across cilantro yet. That's coriander, but you know, in the leaf form. Anyway, I think this green and orange is just so beautiful. I just love this. And not only is it beautiful looking, but man, it just tastes so good. Now, when we're adding green things, people like to put lettuce in this dish sometimes. I'm not one of those people because I think lettuce is great as a, a side, but not as something that goes in it because lettuce makes it just too wet. Not only that, but lettuce has a tendency to go off quickly. And if you want this to last a few days, it can last up to like maybe four days in the refrigerator as long as it's tightly sealed. And we'll get to that later. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more salt. And I'm going to now add my favorite ingredient, taze soan, or green onion. Mmm, yummers. I think this is just delicious stuff. And I try not to put too much in there, maybe two or three cut up totally, but not all of the um, dark green parts, just mostly the lighter green and the white and a little bit of the dark green. Because we've got dark green with the parsley, the mitanos, and I've got something else too. Now, what's great about adding the green onions to this is that it gives it a little crunch factor. So it's like, mmm, yummy. And then you get these little crunchy, lovely green onions here and there in the bite. Probably one in every bite, because I put quite a few. And it has to be stirred up very well. As you can see, I'm just going around with the spoon over and over again. And now and then, I'm cutting it apart with the spatula, just to get down into the very bottom part of the bowl. Because otherwise, I could be missing some really great parts of the bulgur. I have one more thing to put in for crunch factor, and this is just regular green pepper, but it's the thin green peppers. And I don't put lots of this because, you know, it's not really a very strong tasting thing, but it isn't crunchy and it goes well with the green onion and it's quite delicious. I'll be back in another minute. Okay, just a couple more things to go in here and we're about ready to let it rest. Um, the first thing I'm going to put in is something I call the secret weapon. And it's just a tablespoon of hot salsa. <laughs> it's like Mexican hot salsa. It's really delicious in here. People might be shocked that I'm using this Mexican article in here, but here it is. And it just says Adjula, which means hot Mexica sauce. So it's like hot Mexican sauce <laughs> dip. Yeah, it's good. It's pretty spicy, but I'm only using a small amount. Don't forget, I've made a ton of this uh, Inje Bulgur. And so when it gets mixed in with everything else, it's really not hot. It's just a little bit of a tang in there. And before I finish mixing, this in, I'm going to also add something really interesting, very Turkish thing. It's called nar ekşil sauce, and it's pomegranate sauce. And if you look at it when it comes out, oh, isn't that beautiful? It's just red pomegranate sauce. It's sour, a little tiny bit sweet, but not much. Mostly sour. Mm. Oh, oh, I love that flavor. And so that sourness is going to mix in there, kind of binds the other flavors together. And I know this really is looking like a dog's dinner, probably to some of you thinking, my God, what else is she going to throw in there? But I'm actually done for the most part. Now, what happens is this will sit overnight in the fridge covered. And in the morning, it'll taste, it'll taste a little different and it'll be good or it might need some adjustments. So the next day is the way to, before you serve it to a company of any kind, make sure you test it out, add a little salt or pepper, whatever. Um, you might wanna add some more nar sauce to it if you want that little bit of a sort of a saucy twang that is a bit 
sour at the same time as sweet. Or you might want to add some more of the secret weapon, which uh, I call because it's what makes it a little bit warm. It's absolutely delicious, actually. So uh, when I get it done, I'm going to put some on a plate and I'm going to eat it. Okay. Um, give me a minute. I'll be right back. Final part of this video. I'm just going to show you how beautiful this looks when you serve it on a plate. And it's just fluffy and nice. It's cold, but it's not freezing. It's just not been in the refrigerator yet. All of those flavors will bind overnight and it'll be yummy. Mm. And of course, served with wine, it's the best, especially red wine. And I like to put a little bit of uh, jivvies. These are walnuts and a little um, esky kashar, um, aged white cheese. Mmm, yummy with the wine and fabulous with the kasser. So on that note, I will leave you and have my midnight snack, <laughs> 12.30 at night. And I will say, instead of bon appetit, I will say afiat olsen, because that is the way of saying bon appetit in Turkish.